the wildlife department has exciting news about two brand new wildlife management areas. We'll give you the scoop on these new properties from the area biologists and talk about how work is already in progress to make them prime destinations for hunters. This week on Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead and today I'm joined by Bill Dinkins, the Assistant Chief of our Wildlife Division. Thanks for joining me, Bill. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, one of Bill's responsibilities is overseeing all our wildlife management areas and we've got quite a few, don't we? That's correct. <laughs> you know, Todd, we manage about 1.3 million acres, mm -hmm. um, 70 wildlife management areas and a lot of those are with our partners, you know, Fish and Wildlife Service, our Corps of Engineers, or mm -hmm. Forest Service, but of those, we actually own 50 wildlife management areas, which encompass about 315,000 acres. You know, that's one of the things that makes our agency unique is that we actually own quite a bit of property. And a few years, there was a mechanism ago, a few years ago, a mechanism was put in place in order to help provide funding to buy more property. Yeah, that's right. In, in 2009, uh, that mechanism was added on to our annual hunting and fishing licenses. So proceeds from those go into a fund to help us uh, for our future land acquisitions. You know, we've got so many different habitat types across the state, and, and the nice thing is that most of our WMAs represent all those different habitat types, but when it comes to acquiring new properties, how do we go about deciding where and what to buy? Right, well, most of the time, you know, we'll have landowners come to us and say, you know, I'm interested in selling my place, is the wildlife department interested in buying it? Uh, we look at things like you know the distribution. Obviously, we have constituents all over the state, so we try to scatter them out as much as possible to meet those needs. Mm -hmm. uh, and many times, I understand that we look for properties that adjoin an existing wildlife management area, don't we? Absolutely, that's a huge bonus. You know, anytime you can add to an existing wildlife ma uh, management area that has staff already on, it, it's a huge bonus for us. You bet. Well, today we're going to be talking about two of our most recent acquisitions. The first, the McFarland unit, actually adjoins the Beaver River Wildlife Management Area in the Panhandle. Mm -hmm. We're going to go visit that area for ourselves, and then afterwards we're going to take a look at a new WMA in South Central Oklahoma, the Cross Timbers Wildlife Management Area. The Oklahoma Department of Wildlife has recently acquired approximately 9,000 acres adjacent to the Beaver River Wildlife Management Area. This new area will be called the McFarland Unit, and uh, as you can see behind me, it is similar in habitat type to that on Beaver River WMA. The McFarland Unit, along with Beaver River WMA, normally has really good hunts as far as dove hunting, white-tailed deer, occasionally some good mule deer taken off the area as well. Depending on the year, we have some good quail hunting opportunities as well. Turkey hunting is limited, but there are some very good toms harvested off the area normally. Uh, we expect good things out of the McFarland unit as well. The McFarland unit will be managed slightly different than the Beaver River WMA with uh, more limited hunting opportunities. Uh, youth deer gun along with muzzleloader and regular deer gun season will be through our controlled hunt program. The McFarland unit butts up on the east side of the Beaver River WMA and it travels along the Beaver River all the way to the town of Beaver and uh, also on the northeast side we butt up to the Beaver Sand Dunes where there's uh, another 
opportunity for recreational activities, uh, a lot of ATV riders, things of that nature. This area is long and skinny like uh, Beaver River WMA, so therefore there's m multiple access points. Some of the more common hunting techniques out here are uh, more spot and stock oriented. Uh, due to the lack of trees, we do not have as many tree stand hunting opportunities. Uh, more ground blinds and uh, visibility is a big thing where you can set up on a hill and see for miles. This area is unique, unlike other WMAs in the state, where it has rolling sand hills in between the upland sites and down in the river bottom. They've got bowls, pockets of sand that um, a lot of the wildlife species will hold up in. It's out of the wind, things of that nature, which creates a, a great opportunity for spot and stock hunting. So I encourage you to come visit us at Beaver River WMA and the McFarland Unit to enjoy the unique wildlife opportunities we have on this area. Today we're standing in the Cross Timbers Wildlife Management Area, which is located about 15 miles west of Marietta and Love County. Uh, this is the area that we purchased, the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife purchased in uh, 2011, in June. So it's almost a year later, and we've been accomplishing quite a bit of work out here over that period of time. We've built the parking lots and got the signs put up, uh, working on some habitat issues now with some uh, improved pastures that we're going to try to rehabilitate and uh, get some fencing done so we can have a grazing program here. And of course, uh, our main concerns will be deer, turkeys, and quail with uh, hopefully that we'll have some good dove shooting too on some of the fields that we're going to be putting together for dove hunting. Cross Timbers is uh, 8,135 acres, rolling sandy country, dominated by post oak, blackjack, and other hardwoods, and with the interspersion of uh, warm season grasses, really good looking quail habitat, a lot of it. But the uh, main thing out here is white-tailed deer. We have really got a lot of deer on the place, and that's probably going to be our biggest emphasis as far as management. Now we've got uh, ideas about burning, uh, food plot planting, and disking, and different management techniques that we're going to be using out here to uh, improve deer and turkeys and quail. The, uh, the quail being of some concern through in the south central part of the state is going to be a quite a bit of emphasis on it too. The acquisition of this property is going to be quite a boon to the hunters in this state. Uh, the area down here where we're at in south central Oklahoma doesn't have a lot of public land, especially uh, west of here. So we've got a piece of property here in them that is going to be very valuable. Uh, the deer alone is going to be a selling point. We have a large population of deer and uh, the hunting pressure on them will be where the most emphasis is. Well actually when we, we took the place over there was a you know a good deal of work that needed to take place as far as converting it from a ranching scheme into a wildlife scheme and but a lot of the uh, expensive work was in place due to the fact that the previous owners had been enrolled in the WIP program and through that they'd installed a lot of fire breaks and uh, and done some spike work on the timber and all these things are going to be real beneficial to the wildlife that we're managing for and it saved us a lot of money so uh, the benefit there is we can use that money for the for the uh, further improvements. The Fall of 2012 is going to be our first real season as far as I'm concerned of hunting out here. We were open in 11, but we were limited in what we were allowing. Uh, archery this year will be October 1 through January 15th, which is the same as we had last year. But uh, this year we're also going to have some muzzleloader hunts and we're going to have a deer gun hunt. But these will be controlled hunts. and. Uh, the archery season will be closed during the days that we're having these controlled hunts. Turkey season in the spring of 2013 will be a drawing hunt also and uh, 
these drawings have already taken place, so <laughs> maybe a late on that. But uh, the deer season, as far as this goes out here, will be limited to archery season by the time quail opens, and the archery hunters have had two months by then, so I, I kind of think that they can get along and, and uh, allow the quail hunters to come in here for a while. We just, uh, we won't see the quail hunting pressure like you do in the northwest part of the state or even in the southwest part, but there's still quail hunters in south central Oklahoma and I expect to see some of them out here. Last fall our quail population was low like it was in many areas of the state, but people were coming out, we're finding two to three coveys of birds in the evening hunt, so there's still some opportunity here and we expect that to improve with our burning and disking programs. We're going to uh, look forward to doing this job here late in the career. It's uh, something that a lot of people don't get the opportunity to, to start on a new piece of property from the start. It's it's just pretty wonderful to come out here and work on a place that, that I get to I get to head it in the right direction the way I want it to go and uh, we're looking forward to that very much. Well, we're here at Cross Timbers Wildlife Management Area today uh, conducting uh, a, a wildlife survey. Uh, one, one of the, the goals of this is to document what species occur on the wildlife management area uh, and also the habitat relationships uh, of each species. So what, what we do is we do a, a technique known as a time search where you, where you go into a habitat, you, you listen and you watch for any kind of wildlife movement and you record everything that you, you see or hear in a certain period of time. Uh, we do that, we repeat that process at a number of sites, and at each site we record the kind of a general habitat description of it, whether we're working in forest habitat, prairie habitat, or an ecotone between the two, or if we're in a woodland habitat or a wetland habitat. Uh, and this way we get a picture of the wildlife in the different habitat types per unit time, uh, and we can repeat that, you know, maybe at 10 year intervals, 15 year intervals, uh, and look for differences in relative abundance and presence and absence of species. So it's, it's, it's both a, a survey technique to find out what's here and also a monitoring tool because we've scaled everything to a unit of time that's repeatable, that you know, can be done by the people that come after us decades from now. Um, that the purpose of this trip today, we're here in the middle of July, which is, which is getting to be the tail end of the season when you want to do wildlife surveys. Uh, but the purpose of our trip today is reptiles and amphibians, particularly lizards, turtles, and snakes that are pretty active at this time of the year. But we also record mammals uh, and birds. Uh, for example, uh, on, on this trip so far, we've picked up uh, five species of snake, two species of turtles, two species of lizards, uh, and two species, three species of amphibians. Uh, but we've also picked up about 32, 33 species of birds. There's still a lot of birds that are active. In fact, there's a painted bunting right around us that's still singing, even though it's the, the middle of July. Uh, we also picked up a few uh, mammals yesterday. We had cottontail, raccoon, skunk, possum. Uh, so so we're, we're collecting all of this data and we'll, we'll compile this into a, re, into a report about a year from now. That'll be a, a point in time documentation of what occurs on Cross Timbers WMA in relation to the different habitat types. And we'll also include a, a, a sense of relative abundance. Well, it's, it's part of the game. The, uh, the water snakes tend to be oh, um, uninterested in being handled. Really? And so when you and you picked it up. When, when you pick them up, they typically it up. Uh, bite the first thing they can get to. So, so I got chewed on a little bit by, by my friend, the plain bellied water snake. Well, we, we have done similar surveys before on other wildlife management areas. We, we've done similar surveys out of uh, Pushmataha WMA in southeastern Oklahoma, uh, also Beaver River. WMA in the Panhandle and Sandy Sanders WMA in southwest Oklahoma and Spavanaugh Hills WMA up in the Ozarks and each of these areas, actually all five of the areas that we've worked on so far, has a unique set of wildlife and unique habitat types. Uh, here at Cross Timbers WMA, for example, we have uh, a mix of post oak blackjack woodlands and forests. We also have different types of, of grasslands. We're, we're in a fairly disturbed grassland right, right here, but other parts of the area have, have native prairie, and the department is going to be 
working through, uh, through a controlled burning process to, to try to encourage more of the original prairie grass, try to thin out some of the exotic grasses, uh, while at the same time maintaining a diversity of, of woodland types. Uh, the, the Cross Timbers Wildlife Management Area has the whole gamut of Cross Timbers types from post oak savanna to uh, black hickory, post oak, schumard oak uh, forest uh, along some of the, the ravines and streams. Uh, to, uh, to kind of a scrubby post oak blackjack uh, woodland and other sites. So, so you have, even though you have post oak as kind of a common tree, it occurs in different plant communities from a savanna to a woodland to a forest. Uh, some of the unique wildlife that we're hoping to find here, we're hoping to find Texas horn lizard. Uh, we've also already found a, a big population of painted buntings here. Uh, these are two species that uh, we're, we're fortunate in Oklahoma that they're about as common here as they are anywhere in the country. Uh, the, the other wildlife management areas that we have worked on each had unique wildlife on them. For example, at the, at the Beaver River Wildlife Management Area, there's a, a large population of horned lizards up there. Uh, also, uh, burrowing owl, prairie dog, a lot of Cassin sparrow, which is kind of an un uncommon grassland bird out west. So each of these areas has something, actually has several species that are unique to it and a habitat type that is unique to it. Well, as you can see, once the wildlife department acquires a new piece of property, there's still a lot of groundwork that has to be done before the gates are open for the public. Yeah, that's correct. You know, we, the area managers have to determine objectives for that property. And with that comes different tools that we can use to help manage it. It may be from grazing to prescribed burning to disting cutting cedars, whatever it might be. Sure, and the nice thing about that types of those different tools is that they not only benefit just one specific target species, but it also helps to manage for diversity on the area as well. Absolutely, both game and non-game species will benefit from all those practices. That's great. And one of those other tools that we didn't mention is actually the people use of the area. That's a tool that the resource, the managers use as sure. well. You know, and you know, we, new properties bring a lot of uh, attention. You know, everybody wants to go. And one of the things we have to do is be sure the resource can handle it. So we usually start slow with our controlled hunt programs. That's great. Well, you know, if you'd like to find out more about our public use areas and our wildlife management areas and specifically, we'd like to encourage you to either look in our atlas. We've got a digital atlas online. We've got a, a book atlas available uh, for the public. And then also our, our hunting guide's a great resource too. It is. It's got a lot of information on the seasons and it also has the names and phone numbers of our area biologists. So if somebody has an interest in a piece of property we manage, hey, Give them a call. You bet, that's what they're there for, right? Right. That's great. Well, you know, the great thing about having a piece of property that the wildlife department owns is that it's guaranteed that that's gonna be there for generations to come to enjoy all of Oklahoma's many wildlife resources. You know, we'd encourage you to connect with your outdoors uh, by, by connecting with us on Facebook and Twitter. For all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead and this is Bill Dinkins saying, join us next time right here on Outdoor Oklahoma.